um, the Digital Foundry is a reseller as well as a cloud service provider, so um, I guess it's a bit more of a um, reseller and also customer perspective on things. Yeah, and, and I can give you guys more of like a, just, a, just some points on, on how, how it works with the, the channel. Uh, we, we've been Synology's partner since 2008, and um, yeah, through, uh, through a, a network of resellers, integrators, um, yeah, throughout the last seven years, we've seen excellent growth in the product. Um, uh, it's 75% uh, average growth in the last three years, um, and with 80% of their revenue is from enterprise uh, products. The, the direction that they are uh, uh, venturing, uh, have, have been venturing in the last few years. Uh, so yeah, I mean, data's, data's big. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's exponentially growing. Um, and for example, we, we, we do sell to the, the digital media market. Uh, it's basically 4K video right now. And uh, in the entry level stages, it's two gig a minute. So uh, that's plenty of storage needed. If your business is shooting corporate videos, if you're, uh, if, if you're collecting data for the National Archives, etc., etc., press production for feature films. Um, yeah, and according to IBM survey in 2013, 90% um, of the data on the planet now uh, is, was created in the previous two years. So, yeah, it's growth. And where are people putting this? Like I've said, some are putting it in the cloud. But what we see uh, locally is uh, critical data is still being stored and backed up to in-house systems. Um, uh, and therefore, these devices, uh, previous to this, uh, Synology had other models which, which we see is as a cost-effective system for a lot of organizations to use to, to yeah, uh, considering uh, the high cost of Big brands like IBM, uh, HP, and so forth, top four. So uh, reliability is a crucial part for uh, of IT for businesses. So uh, organisations cannot afford to uh, to be down. What we see is the rapid improvement of Synology's products in terms of redundant functionality. Uh, so previously, you know. Uh, there, uh, as Michael mentioned, there were there were functions in in HA, but I think uh, with this product, it's a it's a leap, and it's uh, it's a big step in, in, into the enterprise space. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, channel partners, as, as we know, channel partners is extremely important. Uh, everyone from the, the the vendor, distributor, the reseller, uh, uh, is is have, they they all have a role in maintaining a healthy brand. So. We don't, we don't believe the brand would be this successful without the, the channel support, the path that Synology has taken many years ago. So uh, on that note, some real life uh, discussion from Steve, one of our uh, awesome channel partners uh, who uh, is a great believer of Synology and also uses it himself to provide cloud services for his So, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gents, uh, good morning. Steve Gordon from the Digital Foundry. We've been operational as a IT services and solutions business for 21 years and uh, have used data storage products well, since 10 megawatt hard drives were around and it took four people lifting off the back of the truck. So when you look at a, a journey in uh, technology and storage, it's uh, an amazing piece of engineering sitting on the table over there to offer the, the product, the service, and the solution in one box, in one channel, from one distributor, from one provider. That you just don't need to look elsewhere. Uh, we've diversified uh, over the past two years from a terrestrial based service provider to uh, cloud services. As a result, TDF Cloud Services hosts customers from China, most of Asia, and, and Australia, and the US, out of our Sydney data center and out of Singapore and in both places we're utilising the Synology product for both hot cold storage, um, VMware, uh, iSCSI interaction and Hyper-V interactions uh, and as a result find that our ability to provide uh, competitive pricing 
to the customers utilizing enterprise grade gear, it, it, it's an option now. You know, we don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in storage uh, to provide what essentially is cold storage uh, for most customers. You know, they all want terabytes and terabytes of space and use pretty much none of it. Uh, so we're able to do that now effectively, cost effectively, and uh, be able to sleep at night knowing that nothing's going to go wrong. In the event something does go wrong, then we rely on that channel through our through silicon to Synology to be able to, you know, to have a resolution. The product before us is pretty much outstanding as far as an enterprise grade product goes. Because as, you, as you're well aware, the, the line between small, medium and enterprise business is just wishy-washy. It's so blurred. You can have a company that has you know, six designers and two development staff that have the needs of an enterprise uh, storage solution, but can't afford one of the big fours and won't utilize you know, a tenth of what they offer anyway. They're after reliable storage, fast access, and you know, in one of our customers' terms, I just want my staff to stop yelling at me because they have to wait for the product to get across the line. So by implementing the Synology Enterprise gear, we've managed to remove that headache for most of those you know, small to medium businesses. You find that legal firms, we have legal firms that you know, need full VMware solutions without you know, the huge budgets. Let's be honest, there's not a lot of budget in IT for small business or even medium business for that matter. Uh, so to be able to provide them with a cost-effective solution, giving them every product uh, solution out of one box, VMware integration, iSCSI, 10 gigabit, large storage, small storage, fast storage. It's just so uh, customizable and flexible a solution. So uh, our cloud services, as I mentioned, run uh, the Synology uh, storage, utilizing SaaS Nearline product for cold storage and enterprise SaaS for uh, on-demand, high availability storage. Uh, we find that we meet the, the needs of all of those customers that utilize our services you know, without the huge price tags. It's hard enough to compete against the, uh, the Googles, the, the Office 365s of the world, and we don't see ourselves as being a competitor. We see ourselves as offering solutions at a boutique level and being able to do that without, without worrying that's going to go all pear-shaped. So um, I'm a strong believer in this product uh, based on experience internally, customers terrestrially, and in the cloud. I um, just wanted to guess, open up to some questions. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to direct it to either Michael or Steve. How much does the ease of use come into it um, with regards to the operating system and how sort of practical it is these days and easier to manage? Everything, uh, and not, not just Synology in this case, but a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of uh, vendors are moving away from that uh, command line or really intricate uh, management interface to a a fairly, um, and if I use this word loosely, but a fairly consumer-based um, interface. And a lot of people can't get their head around the fact that the small Synology box has the same interface as the largest enterprise box. Sure, you get the, the snapshot uh, functionality out of the, the large enterprise uh, model here that you don't get, but otherwise it's identical. So. Um, the functionality within the user interface, whether it be the um, dedicated applications like the, the DS file, the, you know, all of these things that someone can open, pull an iPhone out and get access to their files on that same box, it's the same interface here as it is here. It, it, across the board, it is a much easier platform to manage. You wouldn't let a user at it unless they were, you know, designated driver, so to speak, in the office. Um, but if that person was to leave, then someone else could quite simply jump into that role and pick up the interface and, and run with it. It's, it's not rocket science, yet the back end of it is. Well, I'd say that's a sort of reduced cost for you guys as well in terms of you know, the time spent managing Absolutely. It's, um, and, uh, to use the term set and forget, it's kind of a good one. 
you know, and, and now, especially with the integration with Windows and the snapshot technology, previously you would have to go back to the device, restore the data and whatever. Now we've got the VSS type integration, simple right click, restore go. You know, any user can do it if they want to, you know, restore a file they've just killed. It takes the load off the IT department, a savvy user can restore their file with three clicks. So one of the general impacts we've seen with cloud is that it shifted people away from the thought of buying hardware necessarily saying, hey, we want to pay for services. Do you see that actually happening if people are still wanting, you know, is there an interest in buying something like this but saying, hey, we don't want to buy it out, right? We'd actually rather get it in and have you maintain it and do that as a fee-for-service thing. Does that come up here? Uh, it's the, the momentum's role. We do have uh, devices that we roll out on um, a, a managed service yeah. and, you know, as the hardware... Uh, ages we replace them. Um, it's it's something that will happen a lot more. What we are finding is that uh, the customers that we sell these units to at the terrestrial level that have their local file store, they have their USB drive they plug in the back for their local backup, but they also want that offsite backup because they can't rely on the customer going, uh, they can't rely on their staff taking the drive out, taking it home, or what's going to happen in the handbag. You know how it works. So we've implemented Synology NAS units, head units in our data centre, specifically for NAS to NAS um, file sync replication, or in fact just a standard RSync backup. So not only do they have their local backup, but then they've got their off-site backup in a tier one data centre hosted, and again, it's all about sleeping at night, knowing that if, if they had a, a zero access uh, situation in their office, or someone picked up the NAS and walked out, or for whatever reason, their data's there. In exactly the same fashion. And that's what helps to protect against ransomware where someone double clicks a FedEx document or something from the post office and suddenly yeah. all your you know USB hard drives are encrypted. Presumably some of the files will be encrypted there too, but because it's snapshots, I mean you just go to an earlier time and Correct. restore from there and off you go. The and same, then the you've got offline backups as well, which again that some of them might might have encrypted files, but if you go back in time then mm you can restore. Absolutely. Have you had customers who've been affected by ransomware, but they had this technology and they were saved? Once or twice a month, maybe sometimes once a week. Yeah, uh, it's, it's scary stuff. It is scary. Like we, we do our very best to you know, put infrastructure in place to be able to stop that at the hardware level, UTMs and whatever else. But unfortunately, there's still businesses out there using DSL and they get slammed because it's all about the user clicking on that. Yeah, I mean, finally, after years and years, the viruses have really become destructive. Uh, they used, well, used to just not be that destructive, but no. now it's catastrophic if you're not protected. Realistically, the day the virus is long gone, it's all about the malware and the ransomware. Well, I mean, yeah, when I say virus, I mean, the, I mean, the, I mean the modern day equivalent thereof. But mm, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the ability to restore from snapshot in in seconds and minutes, depending on the data size, obviously. So, have you come into an office where every computer is encrypted and then? Within an hour, you've clicked a few buttons and everyone's back? Uh, yes. Absolutely. It's not necessarily... We kind of get onto it before everyone's equipment. Thankfully, it's uh, localised to one or two PCs, but every network share is destroyed. Yeah. And we can restore, quite simply, through snapshot or backups, uh, taken from the technology units. Yes, we do legal financial and construction and hospitality which kind of stands out from, from most but, but our, our bread and butter is legal and financial and those guys unfortunately when you're looking at 130 staff in some some of our customers and no matter what sort of protection you put in place someone is still going to go oh yeah I didn't pay that child bill and click on something and then you know when you talk about it uh, 16 terabyte data store that you've got to pull back from backup. It, it is time consuming. Thankfully, with snapshot and this fast, with other technologies, we can punch it straight into virtual and get them back online. But you know, it, it's it's a big job restoring uh, files that are encrypted. This technology just makes it easier. The, the, the high availability thing I think is interesting and that's clear, clearly there's a big cost benefit in not having to have two completely separate sets of storage. Mm -hmm. But if I'm understanding it correctly, the trade-off is that you've got a single point of vulnerability there. If your power supply unit fails on that storage, 
yeah, presumably you haven't got anything that either the controllers control. And what do you do to mitigate in those circumstances? We, as in TDF Cloud Services, have multiple uh, drive storages. We use one for snapshotting, one for live data, one for hot, one for cold. It's just, it, it comes down to throwing more money at the solution. High availability uh, is important, but in most cases that we've seen, the high availability that they want is from the control of the applications and the network, not necessarily the storage. If you've got good snapshots, good backups, and or separate ones, um, you know, the, the, the chances of both power supplies failing and or back plane failing are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's no two ways about it. But just it's what you've got in place to deal with that functionality. The problem, it's like virus protection. You can protect at the gateway, you can protect at the desktop, but something's going to get through the mail server. There's always multiple uh, avenues of failure and restoration. Most of them involving humans, but yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Human error is 90% of, of those problems as far as blame is concerned. So look, uh, it, in the past we've uh, utilised the, as you saw in the previous slides, the old model of um, controller storage, controller storage HA, which does give you that storage HA as well as controller HA and network. But realistically, that's such a small percentage of what the HA market is, I believe, in that uh, this solution basically brings that enterprise level gear down into the reach of small, medium business. You know, you know, six staff to 150, it's, it's, it's really broad spectrum. So, um, you know, there's always going to be the enterprise guys that are going to take one look and go, it's not EMC, it's not ecologic, and we're not doing it. Having said that, we have Synology units in customers like that, and let's give it a beat. Right, um, does anyone else have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, if not, we'll thank you very much, everyone, um, for speaking, and thank you very much, everyone, for coming, and um, yeah, just wrap things up. <laughs>